Um, hello, um, I'm Kate. I'm the co-founder of a company called The Smalls. Um, the Smalls is a content marketplace that connects the world's filmmaking talent together with publishers, brands, and agencies to make video. Um, I set my company up in 2011, but we were born out of our very own film festival that's been going since 2006. Uh, my business partner, Anna, came up with the concept to showcase small films on small screens, thus the name. Um, and yeah, took out space in an empty shop in Covent Garden and displayed the short films on devices around the room, just like an exhibition, and loads of people came down. Uh, and the European brand manager for Apple came down and really loved the way the consumers were engaging with the devices and with the content and commissioned the smalls to do the same in their flagship stores. So after that, um, we carried on the sort of tradition of having the event every year. And the community grew really organically. So the event turned into a film festival. And now we are one of the biggest short film festivals in the world. Uh, it's the biggest recruitment drive for our community as well. Uh, until, yeah, until we met in 2011 um, uh, and turned it into what the company is today. Uh, so I know we're sort of all here to talk about the huge vi video revolution. I think what we aim to do at The Smalls is to facilitate a direct um, connection with wonderfully talented individuals uh, to improve uh, the length of time things traditionally took, the cost efficiencies, while still retaining the element of quality, which is why the film festival is so integral to, to the business. Um, as I mentioned before, this is the sort of way we, we describe ourselves. We're really facilitating um, the two parties to come together, but with a full-serviced approach, which, which I'll get on to. Um, I should also say that at the moment, um, we work with about eight publishers. And we are currently retained by Stylus, The Times, and The Sun to, to produce editorial content at scale. But I will go into that in a little bit more detail. So from my perspective, the types of video content you as publishers have um, the ability to sell currently is obviously branded content. So um, what I mean by branded content is uh, kind of high quality content that's either built for social channels or your website. Um, and then native video, which I know is what we're here to talk about today. And I think the definition of native video for me is content that's sort of really built for purpose and talks to the audience um, in their language, which I think as publishers, you are the m best equipped to handle that, which puts you as an advantage when creating content. Always on, so what I mean uh, by always on is um, reactionary content. So um, for example, when Prince died, creating a video within 45 minutes to celebrate his life. You know, So being part of the conversation that's happening online as publishers, you're best placed for that um, for that technique, and lives. So I don't know about you, but I've just seen the first commission um, of a commercial deal for lives that was done by Joe Media, who got BT to sponsor their Friday football. Um, so lives, they're beginning, Facebook lives, I mean, they're beginning to franchise now, um, which also provides a commercial opportunity for publishers to sell them onto brands. So how can we help you with this, and, and um, how are we sort of structured and set up? So we have 15,000 production companies and filmmakers that are connected to the platform. Um, that is ever growing every day. Uh, they are winners of BAFTAs, Academy Awards, Cannes Lions, you name it. Um, every week we hear of a new development from them. Um, I should also say that we're not interested in being the biggest um, community of filmmakers. We're interested in being the best, and that's why we have our film festival and continue to invest in that. The film festival is currently being rolled out internationally as well. Um, uh, so how we create content. So as I mentioned before, we offer like a full service approach. So we are with you from file delivery um, uh, from briefing stage. So as soon as a project goes live, you're assigned an account director or, um, and, a, and a producer who sort of manage all the way through the process. Um, so there's sort of two different products. The first is more of the branded content way of working, where we take a brief from our client and we go out to our community with that brief. They then pitch back to make it, so they pitch in, in beautiful treatment documents that they put a lot of love into. Um, we shortlist those pitches, present them back to the client, and the client commissions the one they wish to go with. Um, so for example, we received a brief this morning from the BBC, StoryWorks. Um, it's to find a filmmaker in APAC. 
um, for a leading electronics company. So we will put the brief into um, Filmmaker Speak, ask any necessary questions that our producers who have you know, 10 years plus experience um, go out to our community with that brief. They then pitch to make it, so they might have four days. The pitches come in, we give them back uh, to the client, and the client then commissions the one they wish to go with. So for publishers, it's a really great way of receiving a whole load of treatments um, from different directors with different ideas. So back to um, finding the specialist, which the lovely guy from Back Scratches was talking about. So it's finding the right director who is up for the role, as opposed to using traditional routes that may use a producer or a director who's not really interested in it, but has to do it because the production company won the pitch. Um, so this process can take anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, depending on the nature of the brief. Um, as I mentioned, on the editorial side of things, we are um, currently uh, retained by The Sun, The Times, and Stylist. So my father was a journalist, and I recognized last year that um, publishers were ever increasing um, they needed to produce huge volumes of content, but were not able to commission this content in an ad hoc basis. So um, uh, if you take The Sun, for example, the average uh, cost per video is about £200. So what we did was we put a whole heap of filmmakers that we selected from our community that we keep rotating on the editorial floor. If you take The Sun, we have nine filmmakers, and they're making up to 15 videos a day. Uh, and that, that content is telling the news in video form, but also original content. So the, the commercial purpose for the original content is obviously to populate verticals that you can then monetize. Um, the editorial content um, is the sort of the news in video form, rather, is to enable the publisher to be part of the conversation, but at scale. Um, and then we, we also uh, go back out to the community every month for um, long form content. So these might be um, sequential short forms. So if you look at Stylist, over a period of four months, we created over 100 videos. Uh, 80 videos were for Facebook, and then we created five series, um, four episodes each uh, for YouTube. Um, and they were using all different production companies. The production companies were commissioned on their experience and the merit of their idea. So in terms of like a fully 360 way of creating a whole raft of editorial content, it feels like a good solution um, for our clients anyway. So yeah, so what do you receive when you use this uh, sort of model? I guess content creation, which is the obvious one. Strategic input, so we have what's called the small studio in-house that's made up of copywriters and digital strategists, making sure that all the content is built for purpose. So for example, if it's Facebook, making sure it's up-weighted, um, it's uh, got text overlay, it's in square format, all those kind of obvious things where they're to sort of help. Um, variation, so the ability to leverage multi-skills. So we have obviously hand-drawn illustration guys, we've got claymation guys, guys that specialize in comedy, you name it. Um, and an international footprint. So I think last week we received a brief to find a videographer in Mosul to obviously cover what's going on there. And we found three straight away within an hour um, on the ground. So if, if you ever need uh, an international hookup, you know where to go. Um, so I thought I might show you some videos, obviously. Um, so this uh, video we made for The Times, um, it had 3.3 million views, uh, is pure editorial. It's built for mobile as well, so sound off.
Um, yeah, amazing story. Um, and then a much lighter note. Uh, so content like this, we create a lot of cooking um, videos. Obviously, BuzzFeed's Tasty are real leaders in the market. Um, but we have also, uh, from the sun, started to create this content too. Um, and then to on-sell it to people like Tesco um, at a later date. So this video had 8 million views, which is almost half my country in Australia. <laughs> Yeah, so obviously we have uh, come to grips really well with how to sort of structure videos like that that are built for mobile. Um, uh, also talking about sort of being part of the conversation online and being reactive to what's happening. Uh, these were some videos we put out um, for Mother's Day, which did really well. Very sun-esque. So it's sort of understanding the humor and the tonality of the sun and then uh, replicating it into video form, um, which is really fun. We also sort of rent this model out to brands as well. So for example, during the Olympics, so part of the problem with the Olympics, not as a publisher, as a brand, is that you can't get your hands on any of the footage um, and use it legally. So what we did is we, they rented about six um, filmmakers that were sort of on standby during the Olympics. So, for example, when the pool went green, we used Deliveroo's characters to create this video. Um, so it's sort of like mapping what's happening and what's trending out there and then quickly making a video. So we made that within about an hour to two hours um, and obviously had really high engagement because they were participating in what was happening online. Um, yeah, the types of content we make are really varied. So they range from um, comedy all the way through to branded content. Um, but we are probably, I would say, about 40% editorial, 60% branded content. Uh, we've also just set up a, um, a television programming arm. So we've started to create uh, programming that we uh, sell on to broadcasters and sort of online commissioners as well. So how that works is we go to the commissions and say, what are you looking for? They say, OK, I'm looking for docu-crime or uh, drama. And we go out to the community to see what ideas they have um, for television uh, and, then, and then bring them back and work on them. So I hired an EP to work on their ideas with them, which is going really well. We think the editorial component is extremely important for our community. It's one that they really enjoy, as well as the branded to sort of, you know, make sure that they're getting paid. But the editorial is definitely for the love. Um, I think also publishers are in a really interesting place. I was in a meeting last week with one of my clients who is particularly doing really well on Snapchat. And they said, you know, I'm, I'm really grappling with my creative agency to get on, on top of Snapchat. And they were like, oh, well, we do eight Snapchats a day, you know, and, and we're having uniques of about a million on our channel, so we really know. So I think that publishers have such an amazing opportunity to do well in branded content, being storytellers yourselves and also being forced to sort of communicate on these new channels really puts you at an advantage. Um, I know I'm sort of running out of time now, uh, so there's some of the lovely people we work with, apologies. Uh, so I might end it there. Um, and if you want to, uh, we have like a load of branded contents, but if you want to see anything, any, please come up and I'll be happy to share and, and talk more. Thank you very much. <laughs>